All praise to the Most High. All praises to the Lord. So tonight's topic is called Girls. Okay. So the name of the class is Wisdom as My Spouse. Okay. That's the name of the class. Wisdom as My Spouse. I'm not going to go over girls. I touched on it a little bit. But yeah, all praise to the Lord. All praise to the Lord. All praise to the Lord. Let's open up with the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay. Let's open up with the book of Sirach. Hmm. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36. You know what? Before we get there, let's get the wisdom of Solomon real quick. Just popped into my head. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. Let's start at verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 1. Go ahead. Wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily. Mm -hmm. And sweetly does she order all things. And sweetly does she, the women in wisdom, order all things. Okay, go ahead. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. So it says you I, must love wisdom and seek wisdom out from your youth. All this, Sarak 6, okay. Let's get that in Sarak chapter 6 and verse, verse 18. It says, I loved her, meaning I loved wisdom and sought her out from my youth. Okay, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 18. Read. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. You see, you see that? Gather instruction from thy youth up. So you must seek wisdom from your youth up when you're born again, okay? When you come into this truth. Okay, go ahead. So shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. You're going to find wisdom in your old age. Because why? Now you're gathering instruction. So when you grow older, you'll be able to understand why you are gathering those instructions. That's when wisdom comes in, knowing why to do things and why not to do things. Okay, go ahead. Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth. Mm -hmm. He says, come unto wisdom as one that ploweth and soweth, right? And wait for her good fruits. The good fruits is the fruits of the spirit. Get that in Galatians 5 real quick. And wait for her good fruits, okay? Galatians chapter 5. Let's get there. Um, Galatians chapter 5. Yep, Galatians 5 is 22. Read that. Galatians chapter 5 is 22. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is the keeping of God's laws. Read. Joy. Joy, Peace. come on. Mm -hmm. Long suffering. Read. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith, right? meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Against such, against meaning against all these fruits of the spirit right here, against these, it says there is no law against these things. If you have these, they says there is no law. Meaning what? You are right in the sight of the most high God. Okay? So now, let's go back. Okay, Sarah chapter 6, verse 19. One more again. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 19. Come on. Come unto her as one that flowers and sows, mm -hmm. and wait for your good fruits. And wait for her good fruits, the fruits of the Spirit, right? For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her. He says, You're not going to toil much in laboring about her because we have to labor to receive these fruits of the Spirit, to receive the wisdom of the Most High. We must labor in this truth. That's what he's saying. Everything, whatever it is that you do, it must be to the glory of the most high God. Don't be dragging your feet, not wanting to do it, having to be pushed all the time to get it done. Guess what? He says, thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her because you understand what the mission is. Go ahead. For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. Yeah, but you shall eat of her fruits right soon. So let's go back. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon now, chapter 8. Okay. Chapter 8 and verse 1. No, verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 2. Read. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. So you must seek wisdom from your youth. You must love wisdom. Okay. Wisdom is your first love. Okay. Go ahead. I desire to make her my spouse. You must desire wisdom to be your spouse, okay? Your spouse, like a wife. You see that thing? So guess what? You brothers that are, you know, pre being prepared to get married and all that, 
The first love that you must have is wisdom. And you must study the characteristics of wisdom so that you'll be able to know the type of spouse that you need to marry and the type of spouse that is going to be after your mind. You understand? Go ahead. And I was the lover of your beauty. You see, the first beauty that you must behold and love is the beauty of wisdom. You understand? You know, I saw a clip on TikTok when this brother was saying, listen, you brothers, when you are getting married, you are not, listen, you are not marrying the bumps. You are not marrying the face. He says, you are marrying the character of this woman. Because guess what? If you are marrying the bumps and the face, over time, they are going to change. Now what? That's what he was saying. So guess what? What we're reading here, it says, I was a lover of your beauty, meaning wisdom. The characteristics of, of wisdom, we're reading about, we're going to read about them now. Jump down to verse 4. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For she is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of God. It says, wisdom is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of God. Meaning wisdom gives you access to the mysteries of the knowledge of God. Go ahead. And a lover of his works. It says he was, says he was a lover of his works. He's letting you know who's wisdom. Okay, come on. If riches be a possession to, the, to be desired in this life, mm -hmm. what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? You see that? It says, if riches be possessions to be desired in this life, if nothing is richer than wisdom that worketh all things because all things was created by wisdom. You understand? So you want that. You want the thing that created all things. Not the, pro the byproduct of wisdom, no. What you want access to the source. You understand? That's what he's saying. Read. And if prudence work, mm -hmm. who of all that are is a more cunning workman than she? None. None. There's nothing that is on earth that is more cunning, that is a more cunning workman than wisdom. Read. And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues. Mm -hmm. For she teaches temperance and prudence, mm. justice and fortitude. Go ahead. Which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. You see what he's saying? So wisdom, he says what? If a man loves righteousness, her labors are virtuous. Because wisdom will give you a high moral standard. That's what wisdom will do. For, for, for both men and women. Okay? It says temperance and prudence. That's what wisdom will give you. Fortitude. Okay, watch this. Let's get the definition of fortitude real quick. Yep. Let me share my screen real quick. Let's get the definition of this thing. Now, I want you to read that. Um, fortitude. Read that. The definition of fortitude. Now, courage in pain or adversity. You see, courage in pain or adversity. So, wisdom of the Lord gives you courage in pain and or adversity okay watch this read that resilience resilience wisdom of the lord will give you resilience okay come on backbone backbone some stones okay wisdom of the most i will give you a backbone watch this read spine spine it will give you a spine so when you come into this truth yeah you can come in you come in you spineless you understand? You have no backbone. You understand? But when you come into this truth, guess what? You study, you apply, you follow counsel, you apply it. Guess what? You start to grow a backbone. You start to grow a spine. Mm? Go ahead. Spirit. Spirit. The wisdom of the Lord is that fortitude is spirit. Okay? Watch this. Fearlessness. Fearlessness. Uh-huh. Watch this. Vela. Vela, courage, goes back to courage. Now read that. Guts. Guts. Mm. Read. Crit. Crit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Spunk. Mm, I don't know about that one. But okay, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 7 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 7. Read. And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues. Mm -hmm. For she teaches temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude. 
Mm -hmm. Justice and fortitude, courage in pain or adversity, right? Which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. You see that thing, which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life because wisdom will give you all these things. Life will not give you these things, but wisdom will. Okay, watch this. Jump down to verse nine. We, I'm showing you the characteristics of wisdom. You understand? And here the Lord is using wisdom and giving wisdom feminine characteristics. Okay, watch this. Well, go ahead. Verse nine, right? Verse nine. Therefore, mm -hmm. I purpose to take her to me to live with me, knowing that she would be a counselor of good things. Counselor of good things. Wisdom will counsel you in good things, meaning in the laws of the Most High, right? And a comfort in cares and grief. And a comfort in cares and griefs, okay? So wisdom will comfort you in times of cares and in griefs. When, you know, when you lose a loved one, when, when you're going through stuff, wisdom will comfort you, okay? Just like a wife supposed to, you understand? Just like a sister, a virtuous woman is supposed to be that pillar of rest. But a virtuous woman will not learn to be a virtuous woman if she has not learned to be a daughter under her father's house. You understand? So I need you to understand, I need you men and women to understand this thing, especially you sisters. You need to understand that thing because there's nothing more beautiful, nothing more important, nothing more pertinent than being able to learn how to be a daughter. Because when you learn how to be a daughter, you learn how to be a wife. Understand that. And you learn how to be a mother too. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Give me Sirach. Give me Sirach chapter 23. Sirach 23 verse 27. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 23 verse 27. Go ahead. And they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of the Lord. There is nothing better than the fear of the Lord. So they that remain upon this earth is as we keep God's commandments, we're going to know that there's nothing better than the fear of the most like God. Okay, go ahead. And that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the Lord. There's nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the Lord. There's nothing sweeter than that. You understand? So guess what? When you understand that, you will also understand wisdom because when you fear the laws, when you fear the most high God, you will receive wisdom, okay? And guess what? You'll understand that there's nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the Lord. Understand that thing. Next verse, go ahead. It is great glory to follow the Lord mm -hmm. and to be received of him is long life. Because when we keep God's commandments, when he receives us, he will give us eternal life. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? So you need to understand, you men, you need to understand, you sisters, that listen, you must understand that everybody must fall within their role. Okay? For both men and women. Especially the sisters, because what I'm seeing on social media, I'm seeing everywhere, you go to the malls, in the taxis, at the job, you are seeing, uh, listen, sisters are out of order. They are uncontrollable. You cannot tell them nothing. I sit at the job. I sit at the retail shops. Loud mouth. You cannot tell them nothing. Obnoxious. Nasty. You understand? Detestable. You understand? So guess what? This class is for you to get your mind right. Watch this. Now give me Sarak 36 now. Sarak 36, 25. I went over that in Wisdom of Solomon to show you the characteristics of wisdom. Okay? Let's finish that up. There's something I actually want to touch on. Wisdom of Solomon, go back there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. Um, read verse, verse 16. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon 8 verse 16. Read that for me. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 16. Mm -hmm. After I am come into mine house, read, I will repose myself with her. You see that thing? It says, after I come into my house, I will repose myself with her. The hair is wisdom, but it also goes into what? Your spouse. Because your first spouse that you must focus on is wisdom. Wisdom is your first spouse. is your first love. You understand? You sisters. Because you're going to learn the wisdom from your fathers. You're going to learn wisdom from the leaders of the congregation. Okay? Go ahead. 
for her conversation has no bitterness. That's it right there. It says the conversation of, of, of wisdom has no bitterness. So that's also letting you know that sisters, you cannot have bitterness in your spirit. You cannot have bitterness in your heart. Why? Because if you have all that, you are contrary to the, the type of characteristics that you must have as a sister. You understand? And you men, you need to be able to understand that because if you study, you see the scriptures, the Lord is saying the conversation of wisdom has no bitterness. So if the sister is opening her mouth, she's full of bitterness and anger and all and evil and guile and guile. Stay away from that demon. That's a demon right there. Okay. You cannot build with that woman. Okay. Read it again. Verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 16. Read. After I am come into my house, I will repose myself with her. Mm -hmm. For a conversation has no bitterness. Because the conversation of wisdom has no bitterness. Go ahead. It's pure. Read. And to live with her has no sorrow. To live with wisdom, there's no sorrow. You understand? He's not going to give you stress. You understand? You're not going to have none of that. Why? Because to understand this, Yes, King Solomon is talking about wisdom, but he's also talking about the type of characteristics that you must look for in a wife. You sisters, you must read this and say, you know what? I need to pattern myself after this chapter right here. You understand? So if you find yourself, you've got bitterness, that means something wrong. That needs to be examined and you must repent of it. You find yourself that you're bringing, you're a pillar of stress, not a pillar of rest. Guess what? You're going to bring sorrow to your husband's house Guess what? Your job, because that sorrow noise it comes from what? Lack of self-examination. So your job is to examine yourself and say, listen, these are the list of demons that I'm dealing with. Guess what? I'm going to deal with it one by one. I am need to tick the things of this list. Why? Because you're getting yourself right. You're preparing yourself for a husband. Just like Israel is pre we're preparing ourselves for the Lord to come. Okay? Read. And to live with her had no sorrow, but mm -hmm. mirth and joy. You see that? But mirth and joy. Hold that. Give me that in Ecclesiastes. Mm. I'm going into marriage, but it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, praise to the Lord. Ecclesiastes 9. Okay. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 9. Watch this. Read that for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 9. Go ahead. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. You see that part right there? Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity because we have a short lifespan. We have a short lifespan upon this earth. That's why he's saying all the life of thy vanity. Okay, go ahead. Which he has given thee under the sun. Which the Lord has given us under the sun. Go ahead. All the days of thy vanity. Mm -hmm. For that is thy portion in this life because your wife is your portion in this life. You understand? For you to grow old with her. Okay? She's your portion. Read. And in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. Because you're going to enjoy your labors with her. We understand? Which you take under the sun. That's what he's saying right there. Now watch this. Go back to where he was at now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. Read that verse again. Verse 16. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 8, verse 16. Read. Really? After I am come into mine house, I mm -hmm. will repose myself with her. Read. Really? For her conversation has no bitterness. For her conversation has no bitterness. So when you conversate with wisdom, you, is, wisdom has no bitterness. So guess what? Likewise, when you conversate with your spouse or you conversate with your spouse to be, guess what? There must not be bitterness. You must not be picking up or this sister has got bitterness in her spirit. That means she's not getting a mind right. She's just faking the funk. That means she's not ready to prove yet. You understand? So likewise, you sisters, when you're examining yourself, always read this chapter on a daily basis, Wisdom of Solomon 8, for you to really understand or are you meeting the criteria that we're reading about here? And the job of the fathers is to do what? Is to prepare you sisters for this to prepare you as a sister to be able to meet this criteria because you need a man to guide you. You're not going to do this on your own. You need a hedge over you, okay? So you brothers, when you read this chapter, you know what to look for in a spouse. 
You understand? Because you're studying wisdom, you're studying the laws of God, you're applying them. You are seeing the characteristics of wisdom, which also, those are the same characteristics you're going to find in the spouse that you're going to spend your life with. So don't make no hasty decisions. Okay? Now, go ahead. And to live with her has no sorrow, mm -hmm. but mirth and joy. But mirth and joy. Mirth and joy. That's what you want. Read. Now, when I consider these things in myself and ponder them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. Meaning to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. Meaning to have friendship with wisdom is immortality. Meaning you're going to live forever. That's what he's saying right there. So you really need to think about it. That if you don't marry a sister who has at least these traits, you understand? Guess what you're doing? She's going to cut your lifespan in half. That's what the Lord is saying. Because he is saying, in my remember, it's, two, it's twofold. He's talking about wisdom of the Lord, but he's also going into what? Your spouse. Okay? So if the sister has bitterness, she don't have joy, she's got sorrow, she's gonna, she doesn't bring meth and joy in your house and all that, guess what? It says, you're not going to receive immortality because guess what? That's the friendship you're going to have with your spouse. Likewise with wisdom. You understand? So you need to be very careful on who you pick. You have to be very mindful. You understand? Watch this. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Get to 26 real quick. Sarah 26 and 1. Okay. Hmm. I want to get into my topic, but hmm. hold on. I'm going to deal with this. Sarah 26 and 1. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 1. Read. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. You see that thing right there? Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. So when you have a virtuous wife, you're blessed. Go ahead. For the number of his days shall be double. That is right there. For the number of this man's days shall be double. You will live longer. You see that thing? So, but if you don't have a virtuous wife, you have a demon, the number of your days shall be shorter. Likewise, you don't, you, you don't make uh, wisdom of the wisdom of the Lord your friend, your spouse, like a spouse, your, the number of your days will be shortened because when the Lord returns, you're going to be dust to dust, ashes to ashes. You will not be in the coming kingdom. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Because what we just read in Wisdom of Solomon 8.16, we're reading about it here. Go ahead. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. You see that? A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. So that's why it says to live with her is mirth and joy. You understand? So if you have a virtuous woman, guess what? You're going to what? You're going to be, you're going to have joy. You're not going to be like other men. Okay, go ahead. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. That's some heavy stuff right there. And this man that is blessed with a virtuous wife, he says he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Guess what? This woman right there, she's a pillar of rest. You can rest. You understand? So she will bring peace to your house. She's not going to bring bitterness to your house. That's what the Lord is telling us right here. So you men, when you're looking for a spouse, you better make sure that there's no the, in her conversation, there's no bitterness. In a conversation, there's no guile. In a conversation, there's no evil. In a conversation, there's no anger. You understand? The anger that is not used, the word, the word of God is not being used to get rid of that anger, that bitterness, that hatred. You understand? So you have to be able to, those are the things that you must write down. No bitterness. You understand? No anger, no hatred. You understand? Evil speech, deceit. You need to be able to you, for you to know those things, to identify them, you need to be in this Bible. Understand that. Go ahead. Verse 3. A good wife is a good portion. You see that? Because he says, because that's your portion in this life. That's what we read in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 9. A good wife is a good portion. Not just any wife, a good one. Read. We shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. 
So you fear the Lord. This is the, the portion that you're going to be given in this life is a good wife. If you don't fear the Lord, your portion in this life, you're not going to be given a good wife. You're going to be given an evil wife. That's what the Bible is saying right here. So we, each and every one of you brothers, you must understand this. Okay? That's how we build a nation. It's very pertinent for you to understand, Ori. The person that you say you want to prove, this is the person you want to spend your life with. And the type of nation that will come out of you, the both of you getting married. That's also something that you need to think about. Okay? So that's what the Lord is telling us right here. Jump down to verse 13. Watch this. We're still dealing with that. We're still dealing with wisdom. We're still dealing with wisdom and wisdom as a spouse. Read what you got. Verse 13. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 13. Read. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. Mm -hmm. And her discretion will fatten his bones. So this sister has discretion. Okay. It says the grace of a wife delighted her husband. Because guess what? This sister is taught. She's got decorum. Okay. She's got composure. She's not all over the place. She's not a loud mouth. Okay. So he says, and her discretion will fit in your bones. Meaning what? Your mind. You're not going to be stressed out all the time thinking about this demon that you're with. Go ahead. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You see that part right there? A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Why? Jump up to verse 2 so we understand this. A silent and loving woman, that's a gift of the Lord right there. Read verse 2 so we can understand it. Read. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. You see that? He shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Why? Jump back down to verse 14. Why he will enjoy the rest of his days in peace. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You see that thing? So when you have, uh, this is the type of woman you need to look for. She don't like drama. You understand? So she doesn't have to start drama. This is the type of woman you're looking for. A silent, she's silent. Meaning what? She reverences you. She respects you. She honors you. She listens to you when you speak. It says a silent and loving woman. She's silent and she loves being silent when you speak. And she loves you. She loves listening to you when you speak. That's the gift of the Lord right there. A silent and loving woman, that's a gift of the Lord right there. Because guess what? If you are with this woman, you're going to fulfill the years of your life in peace. Because if she's loud, she's hateful, that's not a gift of the Lord. That's the gift of Satan. And you're not going to fulfill the rest of your life in peace. Your life will be cut, will be cut short. Understand that. Read. And there is nothing so much worse as a mind well instructed. Because this mind is well instructed, instructed out of God's laws. Let's get that in um, Acts chapter 17. So a mind that is well instructed, guess what? If the law says is priceless, the mind that is well instructed, okay? Because remember, it says a silent and loving. That's why it says, hold this, First Peter, First Timothy 2, okay? First Timothy 2 verse 11. Watch this. So we understand what he's saying right there. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy 2 verse 11. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Go ahead. Let the woman learn in silence with all mm. subjection. You see that? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, meaning with all submission. So what we're reading here, go back to Sarah 26 verse 14 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 14. Read. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You see that? A silent and loving woman. She's silent because why? She's learning in silence. When she's learning, her mouth is closed, her ears are opened. She's receiving the info so she can what? She can learn how to better be, a, how to be a good wife to her husband. Because her mind must be after his mind. So here, that's why he's saying that's a gift of the Lord. Because why? She's silent because she's learning in silence. She's not combative. You brothers, when you prove, always make sure that the sister's not combative. 
Because some sisters, they started to argue within the scriptures. That's not a wife. That's a man. That's not a wife. You understand? That's a man. That's Mr. T. Understand that? Okay. This, this, the sisters that they study, they wanna, they wanna argue, they wanna argue down in the scriptures. That's not somebody that you can build with. Secondly, there are those sisters that they, they, they study because they want to learn to be an asset to their husband, to be an asset to their nation. There are those sisters that study just so they can say, I know more scriptures than you. You cannot build with that woman. You cannot build with that woman. You understand? So I need you men to understand that. Because if she's starting to fight you in the scriptures to battle you like you had camp, guess what? Her conversation has bitterness. Her conversation has no joy. You understand? Her conversation has no mirth. You men understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, go back to where it was that now. First Timothy 2, verse 11. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to get to my class. Eh? All praises to the Lord. Read what you got. First Timothy 2, verse 11. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Now, let's go to Acts now, chapter 17. Because remember, go back to uh, Sarah 26, verse 14. So we can just catch that because I know some of you already forgot. Sarah 26, verse 14, once again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 is 14. Great. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Great. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. There's nothing so much worth as a mind that is well instructed because this mind is well instructed. How? Because it learns in silence. It receives instruction and it applies what it learns. So that's why it says, this mind right here is priceless. You understand? So get that in Acts 17. Acts chapter 17 and verse 2. Let's understand. Um, mm, I don't think that's what I want. I want Romans 2. Romans chapter 2. Yep. Romans chapter 2. Read verse 18. Romans chapter 2 verse 18. Go ahead. And knowest his will, mm -hmm. and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. So this mind, the mind of this woman is instructed out of God's laws. The best results that you're going to get, you're not going to get the best results if you are instructing out of your own mind. You have to instruct out of God's commandments. So when you instruct out of God's laws, that mind will be well instructed. And the quickest way to see if this mind is going to be well instructed, you must use the spirit. You must prove the spirit by the spirit. You instruct out of God's laws. You reason out of God's laws. Get that now in Acts chapter 17. Now. Acts 17 verse 2. Because you instructing out of God's laws, you reasoning out of God's commandments. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Read, read that, Acts 17 verse 2. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. Come on. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. You see that? So he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. So when you, guess what? When the, for the mind to be well instructed, guess what? You have to reason out of the scriptures. You have to instruct out of God's laws. That's how you reason out of the scriptures with the laws of the most High God. That's how you do it. Because when you do that, you are able to do what? You're able to, to test the spirit by the spirit. You see whether they are of God. Get that in first, first, uh, first John 4 verse 1. You are seeing if the spirit they are of the Lord or not. Okay, read that. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Beloved, believe not every spirit Believe not, believe not, because everybody will say, I believe in the Lord. I love the Lord. I want to get married. I want a Lord in my life, because that's what they will say. The sister will say, I want a Lord. Now I'm ready for a Lord. Okay, says you want a Lord or you want a husband, because those are two different things. A Lord, he's Lord over you. A Lord, he's got the final say. That's a Lord over you. 
a husband is a, is what? A husband does not have the final say, but a Lord does, okay? So read that again, verse one. First John chapter four, verse one. Go ahead. Beloved, believe not every spirit, mm -hmm. but try the spirits, whether they are of God. You see that? But try the spirit, try the sister, whether they are of God. Try the brother, whether they are of God. Okay, because both of you, remember, wisdom must be your first love. That's with, your first love is wisdom. So before you get married, you must make wisdom to be your spouse and vice versa. Sisters as well. Why? Because the day you prove, what are you proving? That You're proving whether this spirit is of God. That's what you're proving. I need you men and women to understand that. The day when you say, I want to prove, what are you proving exactly? You proving whether the spirit is of God or not. How are you going to prove that? You prove them by the spirit. Because they sub the spirit of the Lord is supposed to be their first love. Hmm. Read it again, verse 1. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Go ahead. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Because you've got men with fringes and a bottle of blue and a Bible. You understand saying, no, I'm an Israelite. I love the Lord and all that. Sisters wearing long dresses, head covering in Jews and all that, saying, I love the Lord. We hear all that. Okay, let's put it to the test. This is what he's going into. This is the proving process here. Let's put this thing to the, let's put your spirit to the test and vice versa. Let's see whether you are of God. Because when you're going to reason, you will reason out of the scriptures. If the reasoning is not based on what is written, guess what? Something, somebody is faking the funk in the midst of you. You understand? Somebody just wants a rod. Somebody just wants a vagina. That's it. But you must prove whether the, that brother is of the Lord, even though they've been in the truth for three years, for two years, they are proving. They say, no, I want to prove. Okay, that's fine. Prove them with the scripture to see if they are of the Lord or not. You have to do that. Read that verse again, verse 1. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Love it. Believe not every spirit, mm -hmm. but try the spirits whether they are of God. Read. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So what we're reading here is what? The Lord is teaching us that this is how we must deal. You deal, you test whether this spirit is of the Lord or not, or they are of Satan. Now, watch this. Let's get, um, get that in Sarah 6 and 7 real quick. Because it goes with what we just read, okay? So when you're saying I'm proving, you're proving whether this spirit is of the Lord or not, okay? Sarah 6 verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. You see that? It says, if you will get a friend, a wife, a spouse, it says you must prove them first and don't be hasty to credit him because when you are too quick to credit them, you can make mistakes. Some mistakes you can never take back. You understand? So that's what the Lord says. We must move with patience. We must be diligent and move with patience. Examining all things so we understand what's going on. Now watch this. Go back to Sarah 26. Read verse 14 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. This mind is well instructed. So if this mind was well is well instructed, you're going to see how they behave when the scriptures come out. You're going to see how they act when situations come up. You're going to see how they behave when the decision-making time comes up. You understand? When problems are introduced, you'll see how they behave themselves. Okay, go ahead. A shame-faced and faithful woman is a double grace. That's the double grace right there. She's shame-faced, meaning what? She's got decorum. She's got virtue. Because now today, sisters have lost their virtue. Okay. They have no virtue no more. 
let's get the definition of that because that's not a regular word that we use. Okay, read that again, verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 15. A shame-faced and faithful woman is a double grace. Mm -hmm. And her continent mind cannot be valued. A continent mind is, is what is priceless because that mind is well instructed. But what I'm going to show you is that a shame-faced and faithful woman, but a shameless and what? A faithless woman, that's not a double grace. That's a double-edged sword that will kill you. Okay? That's a scorpion right there. But watch this. Give me that Proverbs 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Um, read verse 10. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. You see that? Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a woman that has virtue? Because today our sisters have lost their virtue. They have lost their, they have lost their virtue which is their what? They are high moral standards. They are not showing high moral standards anymore. They are showing what? Wretchedness, nasty. They are loud, obnoxious, detestable. You understand? You cannot stand them. They are loud mouth. They are loud. They are stubborn, disrespectful. You understand? Deceived, defiled, and spoiled. That's what's going on. That's the mind state of our sisters today. I saw a sister at one of the retail shops okay, at, uh, in Midrand, and we were in the shop. So now the brother needs to do something. The sister, the brother is busy with something. She's helping us. The brother is helping us. The sister comes and say, no, you're not supposed to use that cloth. Use this one. You're not supposed to use that spray. Use this one. I'm like, okay, sis, you know where these things are that you're talking about. So why don't you help the brother? Well, go find these things and help him. He said, no, I'm not going to help him. I'm telling him what to do. You know, I said there, I'm like, what the hell? You understand? She looked like a bulldog, okay? And a brother is not a small brother. He's a big brother. Okay? And then the sister comes with her funky behind. She comes back. She said, so, sister, listen, we are sorted. We're good. You can go now. Me, that's what I said. Sis, we good, okay? We managed to fix this whole thing. We can move on. Why? Because she was just being disrespectful. And what? She lost that virtue now. Now it's all just wretched. Okay? Now, that's why now you've got movies called The, 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 the Woman King. What the hell is that? It's all just nonsense. It's all just, it's called role reversals. It's called the feminist movement. That's what it's called. And the woman decided, you can see, like, she get into that character. She had to look like a man. Hmm? Now, read that definition, virtue. Let's read that. The definition of virtue. Go ahead. Now, behavior showing high moral standards. You see that? Behavior showing high moral standards. Not our sisters today. They are not showing, they don't show high moral standards. They don't. They show very, very low, very, basically non-existent moral standards. And they be the same ones that go to church. They be the same ones that say, Jesus is in my heart. They be the same ones that say, I'm washed with the blood of Jesus, praise the Lord. They be the same ones that be saying stuff like that. You understand? Because now there's this new thing now. Because there's, there's a thing that started where sisters be showing their cleavages and all that. and they, But they used to have brass. Now they don't have none. They don't wear bras anymore, okay? And now it's like they're wearing a bra, but the bra is unbuttoned. Anybody ever seen that? It's like the bra is unbuttoned. So the only thing is covering is the areolas, the nipples. That's it. And that's what I'm seeing now. Now there's no bra. The dresses they, or the tops they wear, they only cover the nipple areas. That's it. That's what I'm seeing. I go to the malls, I see the same thing. They've lost their moral standards. Now it's all just wretched, okay? So it's our job to restore that back. Why am I going over this? I'm going over this because of what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 8. Because I know some of you have lost the point already, okay? Now, um, let's get some, some synonyms. Um, read, read, read that one right there. Synonyms. Mm -hmm. Righteousness. 
Righteousness, okay. So virtue is righteousness, which is the commandments of the Lord, right? Morality. Morality, come on. Uprightness. Uprightness, right? Integrity. Integrity, come on. Dignity. Dignity. So all of which, these things don't match many of our sisters, especially our sisters in the world. No, none. Okay, go ahead. Honesty. Mm -hmm. Honesty, read. Honorability. Honorability. Watch this. Read that thing right there. Decency. Decency. They don't even leave the house looking decent. They leave the house looking like bums. They look like they leave the house like they are going to tease us, but they are going to work. You understand? They're going to the they're going in public, but they will dress like that. So now is an ostrich mode now. That's what's happening right now. The reason why I'm going over this is because there's a wretchedness that I'm seeing in our community among our sisters, young girls, and older sisters alike. They are all dressed the same way. And you, big sister, she's rocking his tofu. What is spandex? What is that? No bra. Hmm? And she's working with her daughters. No men. That's what I'm seeing. That's what we're seeing in our nation right now. You understand? This is a, it's, it's definitely an emergency. Because what's happening is that now more and more we've got more and more or less and less we've got less and less women that can show, that can be a good example to these women. You can only find them in Israel. And in Israel, guess what? You have to sit on them to be able to understand the importance of them being a good example to the young girls. That also is like pulling teeth. You understand? Okay. Now, mm, yeah, read that. That one right there. Read that, actually. Read that. Worthiness. Worthiness. Because our sisters have lost their virtue, their worth, their worth. Guess what? That's why now men deal with them according to the standards of the world because they behave like the, the, way, the way the world has taught them how to behave, how to look at themselves, how to define beauty. The standard of beauty has changed because the standard of beauty is defined by the most High God. But now the sisters are following the standard of beauty that is defined by the white man, our enemies. So now they follow that. They expect the men to what? To follow that. If you don't, they say we are poor. If you don't, they say mm, it's not my type. You understand? But if you had your type, sister, you'd be married with kids in a stable home. But because you've been looking for your type, now you've got three kids, no men, three different baby fathers. Why? Because you've been looking for your type according to the standard that the world has set, not according to the standard that the Mosa has set, which is virtue, having high moral standard. Now, the men, they see you, they compliment you because that's what you're fishing. You're looking for compliments. You want men to tell you how look, how beautiful you look and all that. Guess what? Proverbs 31 real quick. Proverbs 31 verse 30. I'm going to show you that because that's the diseases our sisters have now. This is the sickness that is in the minds of our sisters. And guess what? The same sickness the brothers have. Because now the brothers, now they have to be, they have to what? They make it worse. Because they compliment, they know they're going to get some ass. That's what it is. Read what you got. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Go ahead. Favor is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. What is the favor? The compliments. That's favor. The, the, the likes on YouTube. The comments on YouTube. You understand? People liking your video on YouTube. When you be tweaking, being all wretched with a loud mouth and all that. Yeah. That's favor. That is deceitful. Go ahead. And beauty is vain. And your beauty is vain because over time, gravity will pull things down. You're not going to look the same that you, you're not going to look the same way in 10 years time, 20 years time. You're not going to look like that. So that's why this beauty is vain. Because, but the people will compliment you on those vain things. Why? Because they know that when they compliment you on those things, they know you've got a low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You've got a low self-esteem, which means that you gullible, you easy. You understand? You are vulnerable. But watch this. Go ahead. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You see that thing? The, the woman that will receive praise is the one that fears the Lord. 
Not the one that decks herself. I'm not, listen, because I know how sisters think. No, but you, you're saying we're not supposed to decorate us. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you pray, if you fear the Lord, you are going to receive your worthy praise. Why? Because if you fear the Lord, that means you understand that the importance of your mind being right. Because there's no use that you look good on the outside, but inside you are like a walking corpse. When you open your mouth, it's like, mm, just, you know what? Just keep your mouth shut and we are okay with it. Guess what? Then you, you are just, you are that beautiful monster that nobody wants to talk to. Nobody wants to deal with. Nobody want to come to, want to, wants to come close to. Why? Because when you open your mouth, it's like, listen, stay away. But sisters now, they focus on these cosmetic stuff instead of focusing on the mind, getting their minds right. So now they put more emphasis on what's on the outside, how they dress and all that. They forget to fix the woman on the inside. That demonic woman that is on the inside, they don't want to fix that. So now, guess what? You receive the favor, which is deceitful. You'll, you'll be complimented on your beauty, which is vain, but you'll forget the weightier matters of the law, which is what? To fear the most High God. And then you'll receive your praise. You sisters, I hope you understand that thing. Okay, now, watch this. Um, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to Sarah 26, verse 15. Now, watch this, because what's happening, you see this verse right here? Mm, this is a heavy verse. Maybe what I will do is I'm going to touch on a little bit on the class that I want to go over. But obviously, I'm not going to go over it now, but I'm going to show you something with this verse 30 right here. Give me the book of Sarah 36, 25, okay? Remember, the class I wanted to go into is girls, okay? This is an acronym, okay? The first piece of that G is gullible. Now, read that Sirach 3625. Watch this. Let's get the definition of gullible real quick. You understand? I'm just touching a little bit on the class I'm going to go over because I really would like to have gone over the class, but, you know, the spirit took me somewhere else. But all praises. Now, read the definition of gullible. The definition of gullible Go ahead. adjective mm -hmm. easily persuaded to believe something. Mm -hmm. Credulous. Credulous. So it says easily persuaded to believe something. You are easily persuaded, meaning you go with the wind. You have no spine because you have no hedge over you. That's the problem. Okay. Now let's read that. Trustful. Trustful, right? Watch this. This this one that is grayed out. Watch this. Easily deceived. Uh -huh. or, or led. Easily or led. deceived or led. Easily deceived. Okay. Watch this. Mm. Read that. Unsuspecting. Unsuspecting. Go ahead. Unsuspicious. Unsuspicious. Okay. Watch this. Read. Unwary. Unwary. Watch this one right here. Hmm. Unguarded. Unguarded. That right there. Unguarded. Let's click. Now I want you to read that thing. The definition, the definition. of unguarded. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Without protection or a guard. Without protection or a guard. Without protection or a guard. Okay, read. Undefended. Undefended, meaning by yourself, vulnerable, gullible, alone. Read. Unprotected. You're not protected. Go ahead. Defenseless. Defense. That's, that's, that's our sisters today. They are unguarded. They are, undefend, they are undefended. They are unprotected. They are defenseless. Because they say, I don't need no man. I can do bad but all by myself. Yes, you are doing bad all by yourself. Of course you are. You are 100% right. We agree with you. You are doing bad all by yourself. Because since those sister says we've taken, they've taken over because now men don't want to take their rightful place. What has, what has been the byproduct of women taking the lead? What has happened? That's the product is the world you see today. Okay. Now go ahead. Unfortified. Unfortified. Go ahead. Unshielded. Unshielded. Read. An arm. An arm. Watch this. Vulnerable. 
vulnerable, vulnerable. That part right there, vulnerable. You see that? Watch this. Unwashed. Unwashed, unwashed. Mm. Unattended. Unattended. But here's another definition of unguarded. Read that. Not well considered. Careless. Uh, careless. You see that thing? Careless. So gullible is the same as unguarded, is the same as care, being careless. Okay, read. Similar. Ill advised. Ill advised because you have no cancer. Okay, watch this. Thoughtless. Thoughtless, meaning what? Danda hit. Okay, watch this. And thinking. And thinking. The brain is offline. Okay, watch this. <laughs> Full hardy. Full hardy. You see that? Watch this. Hasty. Hasty. Chacharach. That's what happens when you are gullible. When you are gullible, you are chacharach. You hasty. You understand? He says you are unthinking. The brain is offline. You understand? So, watch this. Mm. Mm. Read that. Unmindful. Unmindful. Now, here's another. Here's, here's one. I like this one better. Read that. Heedless. Heedless. You don't take heed. You are heedless. Watch this. Absent-minded. The brain is offline. The brain is taking the back seat. And then in the brain is mush, is chocolate, okay? Is makeup, okay? Is nails that look like the, the you know, the crow's feet and all that. Mm -hmm. Bed claws, you know, long weaves, makeup. That's all that is in the mind. The brain is offline and in the head is just weaves and nails. That's it. You understand? And showing cleavage off, loud mouth and all that. That's what's, that's what's going on. That's gullible. And that's where the sisters are right now. Now watch this. Get the definition of hedge now. Watch this. The definition of hedge. Mm -hmm. Now. A fence or boundary formed by closely growing bushes or shrubs. So now that means a hedge is a fence, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a wall of defense. That's what it is. Now watch this. Read that. Similar. Hedge row. Hedge row. Okay. Watch this. Read. Fence. Fence. Uh -huh. Barrier. Barrier. Okay. Watch this. Read. Barricade. Mm. Boundary. Boundary. That's what. That's a border. That's a hedge of protection. Okay. Now this one goes into something else, but I want to show you something. Read that. A way of protecting oneself against financial loss or other adverse circumstances. Like a wicked nigger, like a slick nick. So a head is to protect you from a slick nick. Understand that. Now, watch this. Read that. Similar. Protection. Mm -hmm. Protection. Read. Shield. Shield. Come on. God. God. Okay, come on. Cover. Mm. Insurance. Insurance. So a hedge is an insurance. Mm. Go ahead. Security. Security. Read. Provision. Provision. Watch this. Insurance cover. Your father or your husband, that's your insurance cover. You understand? They are your insurance to cover you because when 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 a toti walks into the house, who gets up? The man gets up. You understand? He might be put to death to protect you. You understand? To protect your mind also, the way you make decisions, how you dress, how you speak, how you carry yourself, how you conduct yourself, all of which this the hedge is responsible for all that. Fathers in this truth. Leaders in this truth, husbands in this truth. Understand the prophets of the most high God back on this earth. That's the job. You understand? Now 36, 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 25. 
Go ahead. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. You see what happens when there's no, when, when you are unguarded? You understand? When you gullible, that means when no, when there's no hedge, it means you gullible. When there's no hedge, that means you're thoughtless. When there's no hedge, it means you're unguarded. When there's no hedge, it means your brain is offline. When there's no hedge, it means you are thoughtless. When there's no hedge, you are foolish. You understand? When there's no hedge, you have no insurance policy. You have no cover. You understand? You are meaning you are at risk. You're vulnerable. Any time is tea time. You get a slick nick to body bag you. Read the verse again, verse 25. Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 25. Go ahead. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Where there's no hedge, there the possession gets spoiled. Because what is this hedge? Get that in Surah 42, verse 9. Okay, a hedge is a, is a protection, is a leader. That's a hedge, a pillar. Okay, read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The father waketh for the daughter mm -hmm. when no man knoweth. Stop right there. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. That the husband, that was their husband, the future husband, don't know. He don't know nothing. The family of the husband, they don't know nothing that the father is going through to what? To take care of the daughter. You understand? They, they, listen, the, the, has, the future husband don't know. The future, the future in-laws don't know nothing. It's just you and your daughters. That's what you know. Your job is to wait for them. Your job is to watch for them. You understand? You must be that hedge of protection over them. You must teach them to understand the scriptures spiritually, physically, mentally, you must be that hedge of protection. That's your job. Yeah, and that's, this is the job of the Father is right here. Read again verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. When no man knoweth, because the man that is eventually going to marry your daughter, guess what? He don't know. Your job, he guess what? Who's going to prove him? He's not the daughter. You are going to prove him first. You understand? You are going to prove this man first. You are, you are going to prove the family also. That's your job. Your job is to prove the man and to prove the family before they can, this man can even, before he can even talk to your daughter because that's how we, that's where we're going with this. The job of the father is to prove this man and to prove the family too. To see what type of family she come from. That's the job. You understand? It's not a small job. Okay, go ahead. And the care for her taketh away sleep. The care for your daughter taketh away sleep. Because guess what? Sleepless nights, you're working hard to make sure you provide for them. You guide them. You teach them according to the laws of God. You become that good example to them. You teach them about men, that men are full of shit. That's the job of the father. Excuse my French, but it is what it is. It is the truth. Go ahead. When she is young, let when, she she's young. when she is young, that's the job of the father to groom their daughters. Okay. That's why the, the relationship between father and daughter is like the relationship between man and machine. Understand that. There's a reason for that. Why? Because we don't want any slick nick to just walk in and say, no, I want to prove, I want to prove uh, this sister right there. M nigga, I don't know you. Okay. How long you been in here? No, I've been here for two years. I don't know you yet. I'm still studying you. I'm still figuring you out. I'm still trying to figure out what type of spirit you're in. I don't know you yet. You're here for three years. I don't know you yet. Not really. You understand? I have to be taking my time with you. You need to be around me more so I can see what type of spirit you're moving in. Why? Because... There are certain things that I know for a fact that a sister will not pick them up. I know for a fact, or my daughters will not pick them I know that for a fact. That's why I have to hunt. I have to hunt the hunter. That's the job of the father. You hunt the hunter. Hmm? That's how it goes. You understand? Now read the verse again. Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 9. Go ahead. The father waketh for the daughter 
when no man knoweth, mm -hmm. and when and the care for her taketh away sleep. When she is young, let she pass away the flower of her age. Because the, the job of a father is to prepare his daughter for marriage so that she does not pass the flower of her age. She does not reach menopause and she's not married. That's the job of a father. So that's where the hedge comes in. Because when there is none, guess what? She will plus pass away the flower of her age. You understand? And guess what? She's not going to get married. And if she does, she's not going to know how to conduct herself in a marriage. She's not going to know how to raise her kids because she never had a father or a hedge over her to guide her on how these things work. You understand? So that's a little glimpse of coming into the topic, which I wanted to touch on, which is girls. There's a lot in it. Okay. So the first part of that acronym is gullible. Okay. But anyway, all praise to the Lord. I'm going to end the class right here. Okay. So the name of the class is wisdom as my spouse. Okay. That's the name of the class. Wisdom as my spouse. I'm not going to go over girls. I touched on it a little bit, but yeah, all praise to the Lord. Let's break bread because they're going to take the power in two minutes. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Most High.